Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today I've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. I'm a little late this time, and we are going for 18 tracks, 18 tracks I wanted to talk about this week. As always, they are in a Spotify link down below, if Spotify is what you use. Make sure you sort by recently added, but uh, let's hop into it. Let's hop into this week, uh, starting in the bad category. Uh, we've got Must Die Eternally. Uh, this new direction from Must Die is definitely not in my wheelhouse. It it's aggressive and in all the wrong ways for me, and it kind of puts me in a constant state of panic while I'm listening to it. I feel like the mixing is also really flat, and I thought the demonic kind of screaming voice is not interesting really at all. Um, I think these voices and these kind of like screaming can work in other songs, but I don't know, this one just really falls flat. Um, and then the random halftime finale just felt really stale. So yeah, not, not a fan of this at all, I would say. Uh, but then we will head into uh, Marshmallow and Young Maiko uh, with Tempo. Uh, another safe, simple, and short track from Marshmallow. Uh, sonically, I don't think it's really all that bad, uh, but with just how like little effort clearly went into making this track, I just can't put it anything higher than bad. Um, and it's also not even two minutes long, so it's just like a really just, there's no reason for the song to really be a song, not gonna lie. Then we're moving into the meh category. We've got Gammer featuring Run with Roots. Uh, big Room track with a, a sort of Eurocentric vibe to it. A uh, fairly standard beat with, a, I thought, not a ton of variation. Uh, kind of more of a crossover blend between a happy hardcore and a Big Room style of sound, uh, but not something I really see myself returning to. It's just um, maybe not my style uh, on this one, so not, even, not a huge fan. Uh, and then speed of Monster Cat, we've got Corolla and Nuzb with Groove Master. Uh, for a song called Groove Master, I thought the groove was quite underwhelming. Um, it's a fairly linear track with a simple beat, um, something you hear at like the pool side of like a resort or something like that. Um, just kind of a basic, just like a, yeah, basic four on the floor kind of beat. But um, yeah, minimal production here uh, and elements that, I don't know, just favor more simplicity. Uh, not so much my jam again. Then we've got Slumberjack and Just a Gent with Python. Uh, for a Slumberjack and Just a Gent collaboration, uh, this kind of wasn't what I expected at all in any real capacity. Um, first off, it's a bit of a kind of bass house tune with a little bit of trap kind of blended in, but um, that's not really what you hear constantly from uh, Slumberjack and Just a Gent. Uh, also kind of a bit of that constant beat as well. That is also seldom heard from their discographies. But yeah, um, also no really tribal tone that you get from a Slumberjack track, no really spaci spatial tone tone or spacey vibe that you get from a Just a Gent track. It's kind of just like a weird in-between. Um, yeah, it's a simple track, nothing too crazy, uh, but uh, I wasn't on fire for it a ton. Then we've got Rogue Wilds and Aloe Black with Classic Material. Uh, a return to trap for Rogue with this one, uh, but as much as I had loved Rogue's trap songs in the past, uh, something just felt a little bit off about this whole song. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm really, can't really figure out what it was. Um, it feels like it was kind of washed over in a coat of paint that like neutered the impacts of anything on this track, um, especially Aloe uh, Black's vocals and the kind of drop section just felt like it was a little bit more, I don't know, uh, pushed down, a little bit more reserved, just had this weird like muted blanket over top of it all. I don't know, it's weird to explain, but, uh, and with the album art, kind of just feels like it's a bit of a track from 2013 uh, that, I, that hadn't aged as well, but uh, not a bad song. I just, uh, just again, thought it was meh. They've got Overwork with Something, uh, another minimalistic electro track, electro house track from Overwork here. Uh, doesn't quite have that grand orchestral feeling like some of his tracks have been in the past, some of his former stuff, but uh, yeah, reminds me a lot of Dead Mouse, I would say, uh, but ultimately a little underwhelming. Um, but again, just a meh track for me. So not a bad track, but I thought it was okay. Uh, then we got Murata, Orphan of Anguish. Uh, surprise, surprise, this is a heavy hitting rhythm track from Murata. Um, this track in particular is really not my style. It's not this production elements and genre that I particularly resonated with. Um, and so I, yeah, I don't, I don't love it a ton. I don't really get it a, a bit, but uh, I'm sure this would go nuts for the rhythm heads. And I, I, there's elements where I can appreciate um, the destructive nature of it. But uh, for me, for me, it was just meh. Then we've got Son Holo featuring Weathen and Celia, uh, Celia Soul, I'll say. Uh, no Place is Too Far. Uh, the continuation of the existential dance music era, an album coming out September 15th from Son Holo. And uh, this is a real stylistic switch up from Son Holo, um, going for a more house track. And I think in my memory, at least, this is the first like truly house song we've heard from Son Holo, um, at least from what I can remember. But uh, yeah, it's a light kind of feel good cut uh, that I would 
say is maybe just a tad stale and repetitive, uh, but I think this one's gonna be a grower for me. And it's just a very, just a happy, just kind of go, go lucky song, so. Then we're moving into the good category songs that uh, I thought were uh, pretty good. Uh, we've got Slander and Cinemata featuring LEV with Never Give Up On You. Uh, actually, one of my favorite tracks from Slander in recent years. Uh, it is melodic dubstep, but it has a lot of those kind of more impactful drop sections uh, with great vocals from uh, LEV here as well. Uh, it is kind of the same same structure that you get with a lot of other mellow dub tracks, but I thought the mixing was on point and it did the track wonders in that sense, so. I got Teddy Killers and Peg War Nerds with Pump, uh, very driven sort of under the radar drum and bass track here. Uh, it's got a bit, a bit of mere, a bit of a mysterious undertone to it, um, with that yes, very driven constant beat as one would expect from a dance floor drum and bass track. Um, but yeah, it's a consistent, consistent one with a great mixing. And uh, yeah, this this week I thought the the great tracks were mixed very well uh, compared to some other ones. So I don't know. Uh, then we got Zed and Buse featuring Marin Morris, the Make You Say Ellis remix, the Ellis remix of this track. Um, but yeah, in terms of Ellis' stuff, this is a bit more of a reserved remix from him because it is a bit more of a more commercial poppy track. But uh, I did think it, I, I, th I did think it was good in the context of what it was originally. And so uh, it's a very clear cut, kind of jumpy, funky uh, Ellis track in the end. And it's just it's classic Ellis, and I enjoy classic Ellis. Then we've got Casbo, The Way You Had Me, the first solo Casbo track from at least in the last three years uh, since the making of A Paracosm came out in 2020. And uh, yeah, this is clearly a new stylistic direction for Casbo. Uh, there's more heavier emphasis, I would say, on in this tr tr track in particular, in more bass guitar focused areas um, with that kind of makes for a more funkier tune that Casbo doesn't really, hadn't really been a funk guy of, been, of, for, of sorts. He's been more of like a chill, trip hop kind of style but uh yeah as well with a, a lot more of a steadier more simplified beat structure to a song too that feels more reminiscent of a kind of more yeah just basic house or progressive house song and so uh yeah it's a good track uh, but i do fear that casbo may be trying to simplify things too much for it to get uh, to get more of a commercial appeal to it and he might lose some of his uh, luster some of his uh flair and sound design that i think that makes him unique so i like the track uh, i'm very intrigued to see where uh, if this is going to be a new stylistic direction for him moving forward now we've got Diesel and CeeLo with Warfare, the Guerrilla Warfare LP from Diesel, who is Shaquille O'Neal, is out now. And um, yeah, this track in particular is probably the best of the uh, new songs that came out from the Guerrilla Warfare album. Uh, there was the three singles and then the seven new tracks. And um, yeah, this is kind of just your classic one, two, heavy bro step festival dra track that you just had bang to. And um, I, I thought it did quite well. I thought the context and what the album was conveying and, and used for, I, I, th I thought it was good. So uh, way to go, Warfare. The rest of the album, not too bad, but uh, this one, pretty solid. Then we've got Former Hero with Flower Tech. Uh, the beginning of the end for Former Hero is uh, sadly upon us, as this is the, I think, second single from an upcoming and final album from the Former Hero alias. So uh, this track in particular, though, feels like you've got a, like a, it feels like you're, you've got a wave of emotion that suddenly comes upon you. But you're at the club at the same time is the best way I can <laughs> describe this track. It's got a bright and airy synth elements all throughout, but with a relenting backbeat that is constant and there um, the whole time that is just going at you. So uh, I'm excited for what to see this uh, to see what this whole album is going to be in the end. I like this track quite a bit. And then we got Beast Boys Run. Uh, this track is grimy as hell and in a fantastic way. Uh, it's got a certain kind of crunch factor to it uh, in the drops particularly that sound um, just nasty. It's got great sound design to it, very mechanized uh, elements all throughout as well. Uh, it's got quite the kind of off kilter beat to it and uh, I thought it worked quite well, which is um, saying actually a lot because I'm, I've historically not been the hugest Beast Boy fan. I just don't love this general style of music, but um, I, I really resonated with this one particularly so way to go run uh and our penultimate track of the week is riots sold my soul uh riot has been kind of turning their new era in a slightly different new direction uh and i'm liking it more so it's no longer this kind of mindless empty dubstep tunes and uh, has more story and i would say creativity to the track and they just feel a little bit more uh palatable for me personally uh this track uh yeah is truly unlike anything they've ever done in the past it's a kind of a trap future-based fusion that is very commercially uh viable 
reliable uh, and it's one that you could hear elsewhere and that's just not what you've ever really heard from Riot in the past. And so, yeah, I'm hoping to hear more stuff like this down the line from Riot. If this is the new direction they're gonna take this new sound, I did like it. Um, it's a little kind of cheesy in some areas, but uh, I thought it I thought it did work. So, uh, what do you go Riot? And the number one track of this week, in my opinion, was indeed Peekaboo, Flodan, Skrillex, and G-Rex with Batters. Uh, this is essentially Hydrate Part 2, Hydrate being one of the singles or one of the songs from Quest for Fire, Skrillex's uh, earlier 2023 album. And uh, yeah, I, I thought in particular Flodan's uh, bars and flow were impeccable. I thought they were great. And uh, production-wise, this is just kind of another garage, bass house, dubstep fusion that Skrillex has been putting out uh, all through 2023 at this point. So uh, maybe this will be part of a new Skrillex album. I'm not 100% sure what we will see or Skrillex album or two. Uh, who really knows at this point, but I did like the song, even though I liked Hydrate more. So that's why it's not in standout because I, I think this is Hydrate's just a better version of the song. But uh, yeah, that has been this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any and all in the songs in the comment section below. Other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.